The next item, the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 18619 in the name of Margaret Mitchell on charities Scotland and Holyrood. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Margaret Mitchell to open the debate. Ms Mitchell, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's a great pleasure to open the debate, which welcomes the publication of this limited edition book, Charities Scotland and Holyrood, 20 Years Delivering Change. The book has pro been produced by the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisation to mark the Parliament's 20th anniversary and to celebrate the partnership working between the Parliament and Scotland's charities, voluntary and third sectors. This is a partnership that has developed, grown in strength and proved to be hugely successful in raising awareness about issues too numerous to count and in advocating for and helping to deliver legislative change. The SCVO itself is an umbrella organisation operating at a national level to support, promote and develop a, conf a confident and sustainable voluntary sector in Scotland. It has over 2,000 members and during 70 years of operation it has provided information on how to set up and run a charity, as well as creating policy and research papers and briefings for debates on relevant topics. 20 key issues are selected in the book. They include smoke-free places, public places, saving marine life, justice for victims of asbestos-related diseases, organ donation opt-out, debt arrangement schemes, affordable housing, free personal care for older people, community right to buy, and human trafficking and exploitation. There are other issues in the book which individual members and cross-party groups have been actively involved in promoting and supporting. But in the time remaining to me, Deputy Presiding Officer, I want to cover one particular issue which you yourself will be well aware of presiding officer, human trafficking and exploitation. Ten years ago, signs of human trafficking often went unnoticed. Then, research carried out by Amnesty International, the Trafficking Awareness Raising Alliance, Tara, and Stop the Traffic, Glasgow, exposed that people were being trafficked across Scotland and that victims were identified and helped by the police, but no one had been convicted of human trafficking and exploitation in Scotland. This research was fundamental in making the case for a change in the law on human trafficking. Human trafficking. And in 2013, major and decisive legislative progress was made with a consultation on Jenny Mara's MSP's Human Trafficking Members Bill, which one year later led to the then Justice Secretary, Kenny McCaskill, announcing that the Scottish Government would introduce trafficking legislation. And in 2015, the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Act was unanimous, unanimously passed. And I pay tri tribute to the work Jenny carried out on this issue. As part of the then Justice Committee's scrutiny of this legislation, the committee drew heavily on the experience and expertise of the third sector organisations like Tara. And during a visit to the charity's Glasgow office, I was extremely fortunate to have a one-to-one -one meeting with a traffic survivor. Her story and the obstacles that she had overcome proved invaluable in helping me to understand the complexities surrounding this deeply troubling issue. And I was both immensely impressed and humbled by her courage, her determination, and her optimism about the future, despite her horrific experiences. Sadly, trafficking remains very much a live and extremely vexing issue today, both inter- and intrastate. Despite this, there is no doubt the 2015 Act has consolidated and strengthened the existing criminal law against human trafficking and the, the offence relating to slavery, servitude and forced or compulsory labour. Here it is only right to acknowledge 
and thank the evidence supplied by the voluntary uh, organisations who lobbied for legislation and who have played such an important role in proving the legislation during the scrutiny process. Presiding officer, it's been a privilege to open this debate which celebrates and champions the outstanding work of the voluntary sector where last year an amazing 1.3 million ad adults volunteered. So I want to conclude by rearranging the quote from the Chief Executive of the Scottish um, voluntary uh, sector, Anna Fowles, who represents not just these volunteers, but also the dedicated 105,000 people who are employed in the third sector. And to stress, it's crucial, the Scottish Government, the Scottish Parliament and NSPs from all parties work constructively with charities to ensure that com the communities we represent and are here to support are not forgotten. So I know I speak for everyone in the chamber this evening when I say that this is indeed, and it is indeed in this spirit, that we look to the future and the next 20 years to continue to work together and to harness the motivation, diversity and talent that is Scotland's vibrant, eclectic third sector. Thank you very much. And I call Kenneth Gibson, we followed by Gordon Lindhurst, please. <clears throat> Thank you, presiding officer. And firstly, I would like to congratulate Margaret Mitchell for bringing this debate to the chamber. While uncertainty rages on around us, it is all the more important that we celebrate something as positive and constructive as volunteering. The work done by the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations, or SCVO, as well as volunteers across Scotland, is always worth highlighting. I'm delighted that SCVO has produced the book Charities Scotland and Holyrood, 20 Years of Delivering Change, and I too have my copy, in order to celebrate two decades of the wonderful volunteer sector we have here in Scotland, which works in partnership both with local authorities and this parliament. I'm even more thrilled to be involved in some of the campaigns, most notably smoke-free public places. This is a topic that I campaigned for from the commencement of the first parliament back in 1999, uh, before the Liberal, uh, Labour Democrat, sorry, the Liberal Democrat Labour Coalition formally took forward the Smoking Health and Social Care Scotland Act in 2005. And I'm sure we all remember when you would walk into a restaurant and be asked, smoking or non-smoking, or in cinemas, pubs, public transport, how long ago that now seems. As I'm quoted in SCVO's book, Smoking is still far too prevalent, but real progress has been made in reducing its acceptability, prevalence and health impact. It's now hard to believe that folk once smoked more or less everywhere and are glad to have played a part in this radical cultural change we have seen over the last 13 or more years. Although those against the ban claim it would mean places such as bars or restaurants would lose out in business, the opposite was true and the public actually came out in overwhelming support of the ban. Thanks to their efforts, it has been proven that the health benefits and changes in attitudes to smoking have been significant. Of course, the SNP government has continued with ambitious legislation in many areas towards the aim of creating a tobacco-free generation by 2034. <coughs> this includes banning the sale of tobacco and nicotine vapour products to under 18s, introducing statutory age verification measures and banning smoking in cars where children are present. And I'm delighted that SCVO's book also celebrates other important changes, such as the SNP government's abolition of backdoor tuition fees for Scottish students in 2008, and the 2015 Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Act, which Margaret uh, Mitchell discussed in some detail. This, in fact, was met with unanimous support by the Parliament and sought to strengthen and consolidate existing laws on human trafficking and offer more robust support to victims. And, and as someone who led our members' debate on that issue in the first parliament, I was delighted when that was actually passed. Of course, Scotland's voluntary sector is not just an integral part of our society, but also our economy. The sector has an annual income of more than £5.8 billion and 107,000 paid staff, comprising 40 over 45,000 organisations. In my own area of North Ayrshire alone, there are 335 third sector charities employing 701 people, while 27% of adults volunteer in some capacity. From Garnock Valley's Men's Shed to North Ayrshire Food Bank to Boyd or, Oi, Boyd or Neighbourhood Watch, to name just three. Uh, though the 20 key campaigns highlighted in this book uh, um, uh, touch on a number of issues, it's clear that the third sector has resulted 
uh, not, not just in some legislation, but m much legislation in Scotland. Real legislation created for the benefit of the people of Scotland. Indeed, the third sector is a key consultee in virtually all legislation brought forward in this Parliament, and SCVO is often at the very heart of this. Presiding officer, I believe that today's debate has affirmed that there is an important and special relationship between the third sector and the Scottish Parliament, working constructively to effect important and lasting change for our country. It's a pleasure to celebrate this wonderful history of volunteering and the government's continued cooperation with Scottish volunteering organisations to create such groundbreaking and inspirational legislation. I hope we can continue this great partnership for another 20 years and beyond as we all seek to build a better Scotland. And I again thank Margaret Mitchell for bringing forward today's debate. Thank you very much, Mr Gibson. And I call Gordon Lindhurst, we followed by Lean Smith. Mr Lindhurst. <clears throat> thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The voluntary and charitable sector is a key and important part of our Scottish way of life. Last year, four in every five Scots used a third sector organisation in some capacity. And I think that speaks volumes about the importance of the voluntary sector in Scotland's communities. The third sector plays a key role in the lives of many who need the help and assistance of all of us in our communities. Churches, charitable organizations, and volunteers all have a role to play. Indeed, we all benefit from and need the third sector. It is, of course, true that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Government and state organizations simply could not make up the gap if the third sector we rely upon were to disappear overnight. In the city of Edinburgh, within Lothian region, my understanding is that some 32% of people participate regularly in voluntary work, which is uh, slightly above the national average. But it, it is important, whatever the statistics say, to continue to encourage more people everywhere, including young people, to engage in volunteering to ensure the level of commitment we have seen in Scotland in the past, and that this continues. And it is also important that this parliament and the Scottish government play their role in facilitating the voluntary sector and do not place unnecessary regulatory or other burdens on it. Part of that role is, of course, also the public perception of the third sector and the opportunity that this parliament presents, also with its facilities here, to showcase the work of the third sector. Today I was at an event in the parliament held by Safe Families for Children, a charity which, and I quote from its, its website, provides isolated families going through a difficult time with support and guidance by offering friendship, resources, and a short break for children until their parents are back on their feet with a stable support network around them. This is but one of a myriad of charities which exist and have over the years been able to hold receptions and events in this parliament. And so many have been named in this place over the years from close by, such as Bethany Christian Trust for the Homeless, or Social Bite, which in the recent past has begun new community projects constructing sustainable homes for those who find themselves without them. So let us continue in this parliament to support all worthwhile third sector charities and organizations throughout Scotland and other umbrella organizations such as the SCVO. Let us support them in what we say and in what we do. Thank you very much. And I call Elaine Smith, the last speaker in the open debate. Ms Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I firstly also thank Margaret Mitchell for bringing the motion to the Chamber this evening and also SCVO for a, a copy of their book and also welcome them to the gallery this evening. I'm pleased to be able to uh, speak tonight about the positive change that the voluntary sector and other third sector organisations have helped to bring about in Scotland since 1999. As a member since then, I know firsthand that these organisations have been important partners to, uh, to the Scottish Parliament as they have challenged, persuaded and influenced us to take action, a point I think also made by Kenny Gibson in his speech. They've been a wonderful example of how partnerships and collective strength can help identify the changes that we need to make. And the third sector can often give a voice to people who do not want or feel unable to engage with public bodies or the Scottish Parliament. The variety of the 20 campaigns covered uh, by the book is testament in itself. They show how our parliament, looking outwards to civic society, has become a leader in, in many ways. 
for example, and being the first country in the, well, this isn't in the book, but I'm using it as an example, and being the first country in the UK to introduce protection for mums and babies with a breastfeeding law, which came about because of my own private member's bill and also charity and third sector involvement. And in the book, it's mentioned that we're the second European country to introduce smoke-free legislation and also by bringing justice and compensation for the families and workers whose lives were devastated by exposure to asbestos. I believe that um, this partnership has been one of the real successes of our devolved parliament, President Officer. The Scottish Parliament has become a world leader in the way that it works with the voluntary sector, and much of our policy and legislation is based on their input. This week, Aber Lauer, Scotland's children's charity, are in the Parliament, and I note the absolute conviction that they have in pushing for the eradication of child poverty, and Aber Lauer reminds us that we have the power to do this by making bold commitments to prioritise child wellbeing and economic policy. Presiding officer, the third sector charities contribute almost as much to the Scottish economy as whisky and tourism. In North Lanarkshire specifically, the sector employs nearly 5,000 paid staff, spending more than £171 million. They're particularly active in social services, culture, recreation, sport and community development. Turning specifically to the SCVO's book, which celebrates the positive partnership and uh, results between charities and the Scottish Parliament, I was delighted to be able to provide a quote on the campaign for free school meals. This is a campaign that I fully supported from session one and I co-sponsored Francis Curran's bill in the second session. However, although I welcome free school meals in P123 very much, I would remind the government that children in Scotland are still relying on charities with many going hungry during school holidays. I think it's also sad that many children going into P4 have to revert from nutritious school meals to cheap uh, bread pieces for their lunch, for example. So I would strongly urge the Scottish Government to follow up on the initial promise to roll out free school meals to all primary children. Sadly, presiding officer, our initial success in reducing child poverty in Scotland has reversed somewhat, and I think we must all focus our efforts on the targets set in the Government's Child Poverty Scotland Act of 2017, and I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will comment on that when she responds to the debate. No doubt the third sector will also keep up the pressure and coordinate campaigns to increase the voice of those most affected by falling living standards. Another area in which third sector organisations have shaped the debates and policy development has been in service provision for women and girls experiencing violence. Indeed, one of the earliest debates in this parliament made clear that we would resource uh, women's specific services and invest in organisations such as Women's Aid to give voice to women and girls. In conclusion, presiding officer, Whilst I celebrate uh, the successes of the third sector tonight, I would also take this opportunity to highlight the challenges that they're facing as providers of services to local authorities that are affected by shrinking public sector budgets and the possible loss of vital other funding streams could put charities under extreme financial pressure. I encourage all members to read this book and to celebrate the work of our charities, volunteers and all third sector organisations and once again congratulate Margaret Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Aileen Campbell to close the Government Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And like others tonight, I would also want to start by thanking Margaret Mitchell for bringing this motion forward and for all the contributions that we've heard from members across the Chamber this evening. Uh, and this debate has been, uh, you know, it's been an enjoyable one because it's enabled us to have that opportunity to reflect on and celebrate the role of the Scottish Parliament over the past 20 years and the role that the third sector have played in shaping the Scotland that we live in today. A Scotland where our people are at the heart of uh, policy making, a Scotland that is brave, progressive and ambitious. And the book that SCVO have produced is a really beautiful illustration of the story of the third sector over the past two decades. And in those reflections over the last 20 years, we have seen Scotland shape its policies and approaches to respond to Scotland's distinctive needs. The reconvening of our parliament signalled not just the creation of a new legislature, but the flourishing of a confident civic Scotland and a third sector that had a platform to influence and to bring about lasting change. Indeed, this parliament was brought about not just by politicians, but by that mass mo momentum to bring decision making closer to home. So while we have had that chance as parliamentarians to celebrate the anniversary of this parliament, tonight I think is a really useful opportunity and chance to celebrate the role of the third sector in its positive influence in Scottish public life. 
and I think it has been really valuable to hear uh, directly from members about their own experiences, the things that they have achieved through the last 20 years uh, shaped by the third sector. Uh, Margaret Mitchell spoke in, from the outset uh, very uh, authoritatively and with great passion about the impact that she uh, had felt from the third sector during the scrutiny of the human trafficking bill and again that that particular issue being of great uh, relevance to the ongoing uh, investigations that are happening uh, down in, in Essex. And it shows again how important it is to make sure that we get those policies and that legislation right. But the process of going through there from our members of the members bill to uh, the government adopting a bill and passing it, but also enabled through the, the, through the involvement and engagement by the third sector, again shows that knitting together of when parliament comes together in that way that we can achieve great things. Uh, and again, Elaine Smith spoke about the involvement she had, although not part of the book, but certainly the, the work that she did in terms of moving forward breastfeeding. And uh, when I became a breastfeeding mum myself, I did so in a country that had been influenced by the work that you had done, the third sector had done, to make my experience far easier than many of the mums that had gone before me. So again, uh, that impact, that positive impact that this parliament and the members in this, this parliament have on people's day-to-day -day lives is something that we shouldn't forget in amongst all the uh, uncertainty that surrounds us. And likewise, Kenny Gibson talked about the, the, one of the massive things that this parliament achieved, the smoking ban, tuition fees, bringing forward uh, hugely uh, uh, impactful uh, policies, again, influenced and pushed through by uh, that, uh, that flourishing uh, third sector that we are right to celebrate tonight. And also, I think, as well, in itself, regardless of the policies we take forward, Gordon Lindhurst was also correct to point out about the, just the day-to-day -day impact that the third sector has in all our lives, regardless of what we do here. And they do so with an authenticity uh, and a reach that possibly we can't have as a government and that the local government can't have because they're agile, they're part of our community, and they have that day-to-day -day interaction with people who require uh, our support. So again, all pointing to the real need to ensure that we celebrate uh, the role of the third sector uh, as we did uh, the, the 20th anniversary of this parliament. And so my own experience as a parliamentarian, uh, and this debate tonight gives me a chance to think about what has the third sector done to me as a minister and uh, as a, a member of this parliament. And when we passed the Children and Young, Scot uh, Young People Scotland Act in 2014, uh, this is one of the acts that has been touched upon by SCPO's book because one of the biggest things that uh, impacted upon me was the Continue to Care campaign which has kick-started an ongoing dialogue with our uh, care experienced uh, young people who deserve uh, as uh, young people living in Scotland to ensure that we as their corporate parents do all that we can uh, to make life uh, as good as it can be. And again, that was uh, pushed through through uh, the third sector organisations, enabling that dialogue to happen between parliamentarians and the young people uh, themselves and shaped and honed that legislation to again create a culture where I think future young people who experience care have a, a better life opportunity than maybe those that had gone before them. And also the influence of the third sector has continued in my current portfolio and they have been a key partner in our fight to end poverty and to create a social security system that has been based upon dignity, fairness and respect. SCVO and many of its members have been important critical friends throughout the devolution of social security. Indeed, the uh, special rapporteur, Professor Alston, recently said that the spirit of welfare state is still alive in Scotland. I believe that is in due uh, to the thanks that we owe to the third sector and their support for that. And that relationship was particularly important for the development of our new Scottish Child Payment, which I was proud to announce on the 26th of June this year. Child Poverty Action Group has called that new payment an absolute game changer in terms of tackling poverty in Scotland. And it represents a really important way in which we are putting our ambitious tackling child poverty delivery plan into action. Now, as we know, the Scottish Child Payment will be delivered by Social Security Scotland with £10 per week per child for eligible families in receipt of qualifying benefits. But poverty campaigners had stressed the importance of taking immediate action to help struggling families. And representatives across civic society wrote to the First Minister calling for that benefit to be introduced as quickly as possible. So again, we listened to the third sector, we responded to the, the calls, we acted when we needed to, and we worked and engaged with that third sector to make sure that the policy was absolutely right. So uh, again, that, that shows that and illustrates the knitting together of the government, parliamentarians and the third sector to ensure that we can get policies that work for the people of this country. 
So undoubtedly devolution and the re-establishment of this parliament has been a turning point in Scotland's history and it's allowed us to make our own decisions on the priorities for Scotland's people. It's given us the freedom to do things differently. It's afforded us the opportunity to take a different path. And I believe that we collectively have achieved an awful lot over the past 20 years and value the role of the third sector that they've played in that journey. And it is an honour and a privilege to be a member of the Parliament. And I'm really proud of the lively and vibrant democracy that we do have in our country, where people and communities are empowered and supported to participate in and shape uh, that society. And at a time of uncertainty, we want to encourage that, not deter that. And we welcome debate and challenge and see that as an essential part of the democratic process. There's no escaping the fact that we live in those uncertain times. And none of us really know what challenges will unfold over the next 20 years. But what I do know is that this government and parliament will continue to see the third sector as a key strategic partner and will continue to value the role that they play in helping us to tackle poverty, reduce inequality and create a fairer and more prosperous Scotland. So as we think about looking to the future in the next 20 years, it might seem, and I think it does seem fitting, to end by reflecting on Donald Dewar's words in his speech at the opening of this parliament 20 years ago when he said, we are fallible, we will make mistakes, but we'll never lose sight of what brought us here, the striving to do right by the people of Scotland, to respect their priorities, to better the lot and to contribute to the common weal. That's what we all endeavour to do here in this parliament, have done for 20 years, have done aided by the third sector, which has enabled us, I think, with pride to look back on the achievements of this parliament, but to look to the future to enable us to achieve what we need to do to create that fairer Scotland that we all seek, to ensure that we have well-being at the heart of all that we do, and to make sure that together we can create that better Scotland that will enable future generations to enjoy a living in Scotland, shaped by a parliament that's uh, strong, but also helped by a third sector, which is so critical to ensuring that we get decisions right. So thank you to Margaret Mitchell and to everyone who's taken part. But finally, thank you to the third sector, who I know in SDVO who are in the uh, gallery this evening, and say thank you, uh, and sincere thank you, to all of them who do so much to help improve lives of others. So thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate, and I close this meeting of Parliament.